So I told Jeff Von Ward that I was gonna, instead of reading the piece that I submitted, I was just gonna like do stand up. And I thought to myself, like, that'd be really awesome. Like, I can like submit these readings. People are like, yeah, come read your story. And then I just do like a real comedy, and everyone's like, what the fuck? <laughs> and I was like, but um, for real though. <laughs> no, no, for real though. No, it's like I wait tables and like, you know, for some reason at lunchtime, I feel like there's always just like tons of women in my section. Like, I look around, all the businessmen are like over here, and it's just like lady, 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 which is cool, you know. But they don't really eat that much and whatever. So <laughs> I'm like sitting there thinking, and I'm like, I want to say to the bartender, I'm like, oh my god. I'm like, you know how when they're like, sorry. I'm so excited to be here. Um, so yeah, so like when there's like a lot of men, you're all like, oh god, it's like a sausage fest in here. But what do we say when there's a lot of women? And I'm like, it's like a fucking taco truck in my chest. So, all right. But for real, I am going to read a story. Um, And it's called Surprise. Sometimes I wake up and I see no reason to get out of bed. I lay there and I think, I'm not gonna do one single thing today that will change the world. Why bother? This is dangerous. It leads to thoughts like, why should I make my bed? I'm just gonna unmake it soon. Why should I shower? I'm just gonna spell by the next day. <laughs> when this happens, I play games with myself. Today I pretend that it is my birthday. I tell myself to get ready, that everyone I know is throwing me a surprise party tonight and bringing their cute friends. So what if I only slept four hours last night because I had a panic attack, thinking about how maybe tonight would be the night that I would fall asleep and I would choke on my own vomit like that drummer from Led Zeppelin. I am excited and I am suddenly wide awake because it is my birthday. <laughs> there is so much to do. Thank goodness I woke up an hour earlier than I usually do because my roommate's cat was yowling outside my door. I get up and I take an extra long shower. I use deep conditioner so that my hair is more curly than fuzzy. I shave my legs because I'm going to wear a dress. I'm going to wear the purple dress with the ruffles that I bought on sale three months ago and have never worn. I put on eyeliner and mascara even though I have only two other coworkers and they are married to each other. And they, are both, um, and they are both my bosses. More than likely, they will take me out for an extra long birthday lunch. It is important to listen to music while walking to the end train on your birthday. Something you would be ashamed for anyone to see on your iPod. Something you would dance to alone in your kitchen, perhaps while singing along using a spatula as a microphone. This could be something like In the Club by 50 Cent or Let's Get It Started In Here by the Black Eyed Peas, or anything by Mariah Carey. <laughs> For me, it is My Boo by Usher, featuring Alicia Keys. <laughs> yeah, it's a great song. <laughs> no, for reals, I love that song. Anyway, when the end train comes, I walk up the steps, I scan my clipper card, and I walk to the middle. I always stand on the train, unless it is almost completely empty. If I stand in the middle, where the car bends during the turns, I most likely will not have anyone next to me. I am not opposed to being next to someone. I just want to be able to choose who that someone is. And if there is an empty row available when I choose a young woman reading a book to sit next to, she will think I'm creepy. Why would I sit next to her when I could sit by myself? But if I sit in the row by myself, who knows who will sit next to me at the next stop, or the stop after that? And I could always get up and move if someone large or smelly or both sat next to me. But that is so rude. It says, I don't want to sit next to you. It is simplest to just stand. <laughs> While I am standing, a man gets on at 9th and Judah and stands across from me, avoiding all eye contact. I know this is because he doesn't want to ruin my surprise party. He is afraid that if he looks me in the eyes, even for one moment, he will smile and he will whisper, happy birthday, see you later. <laughs> I get off the end train at Powell Station. I walk up Powell to Sutter, to the offices of Fennerman and Fennerman. I don't mind when three strangers walk almost abreast, blocking the entire sidewalk ahead of me. I don't mind when an old man shoves to the front of the crosswalk at each intersection as we wait for the light, forcing me to walk along the curb after we cross in order to pass him again and again. 
When I arrive at the offices of Fennerman and Fennerman, I don't mind that I'm the only one there for the first hour and a half. I tell myself that not only do my bosses trust me enough to run the office by myself, they are probably late because they have gotten distracted reading Yelp reviews on their home computer while trying to decide which restaurant to take me to for my birthday. <laughs> a new client arrives, a petite woman with very red lips, who tells me she is from Minnesota. I do not cut her off and make her wait for Mr. or Mrs. Fennerman when she begins to tell me why she is here. I listen and nod as she tells me about her suspicions, the late meetings, the new haircut, the contacts, the way her husband now puts his finger in her anus during their weekly lovemaking sessions. I listen carefully. I nod. I pour her a cup of coffee, asking if she takes cream or sugar rather than simply pointing to the packets. I assure her the Fennermans will arrive soon. At lunchtime, I forgive the Fennermans for not taking me out. They are busy with the red-lipped woman. They are writing down her husband's schedule, his work address, his license plate number, and his favorite restaurants. I walk to the corner market and get my usual a turkey sandwich at avocado. I think, ring check. We will just have to have my birthday lunch tomorrow. Mrs. Fennerman will make a joke about celebrating all week long. Then Mr. Fennerman will chime in and say that I deserve to celebrate all month long. At 5.30, I turn off the coffee maker. The Fennermans left an hour ago. I don't worry that I cannot remember if I'm supposed to leave the office computer on or off overnight. I turn out the light and lock the door. The most important part of my birthday starts on the train home. I decide that I will be the one to surprise my friends. I know that everyone is in my house hiding, even my roommate, even my mother and my grandmother, even my best friend from third grade who no longer cares that I cut her Barbie's hair off. Even my junior high school teacher, who told my mother that I was disruptive and should be medicated, she will be there, and she will be impressed by how well I am doing. They are all at my house, hiding behind the curtains, under the beds and cabinets, in the closets, and in the stairwell that goes down to the garage. I walk slowly up the steps on tiptoes. I unlock the door. I take off my boots and slide in my sock feet down the hall to my room. Even though it isn't yet seven o'clock, I hang my purse on the back of my desk chair and get into bed. I keep my dress on. I pull the covers up and tuck them under my chin. I close my eyes and I imagine my mother in her hiding place behind the living room curtains looking at her watch. She can still read her watch in the dark house because it lights up when you push the knob on the side. I imagine that she sees that it is almost eight o'clock and she realizes the trick that I played because she knows me so well. She walks to my room and wakes me up. She takes my hand and we walk through the house, opening the door to the stairwell that goes down to the garage and shouting, surprise. We open each and every closet door and yell, surprise. We open all the cabinets where the children are hiding and yell, surprise. Everyone laughs. Someone puts on my boo and three people shout out, I love this song. <laughs> we all start dancing. We dance the way you dance when you are alone and using a spatula for a microwave. We agree that it is the best birthday party ever. All right, thanks guys.